Okay, um, so this is uh, the game of life done with hashcorp tools. Um, and at the, I do have a demo, a live demo at the end. Um, you'll see some colors move across the screen, but this talk is really about lessons we learned along the way and the friends we made, of course, and other cliches. Um, I spent a lot of time on the code, um, far less time on the presentation, so hopefully it goes okay. Uh, the main thrust of this talk is silly, fun projects are a great way to learn. Um, there are other phrasings of this sort of thing. Learning through play um, is, I just kind of searched for it and it turns out that UNICEF plus Lego wrote a long article about it, which is super interesting. Um, this phrase hands-on learning is kind of close, but doesn't really capture it because like I do that all the time. Like that's how I do my job is I learn just kind of as I go. I'm not like really trained in this or anything. Um, uh, that stuff, you know, has business goals and things. So it's, that, that's all great, but it's not quite what I'm getting at. Um, our own Dave Cohen um, has a YouTube channel called Tutorial Linux, which I highly recommend you checking it out. And he has a video that he calls this side effect learning, which is much closer to, to what I'm getting at here. Um, it encourages intrinsic motivation. You're driven by the pure desire to do something and not, and learning is like a byproduct of that. It's a side, side effect. Um, I just call them silly fun projects. Um, my absolute favorite way to learn things. Uh, it's fun, you know, it's just fun. The key is that you enjoy the whole thing, the learning, the frustration, the little successes along the way and the utter pointlessness of the completed project. Um, just enjoy the whole thing. I guess what I'm, this talk is really about is hedonism. Um, <clears throat> my demo will have some shell in it, but I won't be showing you much code, just a little bit. I encourage you to play around yourself. I imagine most people watching this are that sort of character. Uh, right, me, this is me, um, Daniel Bennett, he, him. This is my GitHub um, avatar. My GitHub handle is Goldcat. Get it? I don't know if anybody's Star Trek fans. Hopefully that made somebody chuckle. Um, I'm a senior engineer at HashiCorp. Senior means that my opinions are like super important or whatever. And I'm on the engineering services team, as we've mentioned. And that basically just means that engineering services teams, uh, customers are internal to the company. So other people that work in the company, we build and maintain systems to help them out. Uh, sorry, I'm not on social media, but I'll hang out in the YouTube chat after this and answer any questions you may have. Uh, right, so the game, the idea. Um, this was for Hackathon, as we mentioned. As with all ideas, we had a big think about it. Um, my colleague, Jeffrey Hogan, you can catch his talk in about an hour, um, was super helpful. Um, I was thinking initially maybe like, hello world, but with way too many microservices, like first hit the character microservice to get an H then hit the character validation microservice to make sure what you got back was an H. Um, then do E and so on, then hit the string concatenation microservice um, to put them together into a uh, words and stuff. Bonus points if all of these microservices are provisioned just in time, like turn on nomad job that is a H microservice, then hit it and so on. Problem is, that this was a terribly boring idea. Um, I'm also pretty sure it's been done beautifully already, but it got the ball rolling. Um, so we're chatting and Jeffrey said, maybe fractals. And I'm like, yeah, a self-similar, self-constructing system. Still sounds super rad, but we ended up somehow, the details are hazy, but probably Jeffrey, with a game of life. So that seems doable in a, just a few days. Let's do that. And then Jeffrey went off and did another project. Um, so far, the number of people involved are two, me and Jeffrey. Uh, we have some goals. Um, this is just a conceit for the presentation, so I can have check marks at the end. Uh, goals are make a cool thing, learn more Golang. I'm a total Go noob. I don't 
like my background is mostly Python. So I get to learn more Go, write the whole thing in Go. Um, I want to abuse Nomad and console, like really push them and see where they start to fall apart and collaborate with awesome folks. So um, all of these, whether they were achieved, we'll find out at the end of the talk. All right, so the game itself, uh, Conway's Game of Life is a zero player game, meaning you just start it and then watch. There are very simple rules. These are the rules listed here. You have a grid populated by cells and following the rules results in these super interesting emergent properties like this little glider gun over here, this generator that produces these gliders that move across the screen. Um, but it gets wacky. Uh, if you've not heard of this game, highly recommend you search for videos because it's properly mind blowing stuff. Um, bookmark it for after hash talks are over. You can thank me later by being nice to yourself. So we want to do that. Um, distributed across a cluster of cloud instances using HashiCorp tools. It's still weird to me that I can, that I'm rep representing HashiCorp like this. It's, it's pretty neat. I've been here a little over a year and it still hasn't quite sunk in, I don't think. Um, this is what we ended up with. Um, bullet points here, you're probably reading in your mind right now. Um, separate process for each cell, console for service discovery, the rules are applied internal to each job. So there's not some centralized decision maker. Um, it's all distributed across the different cells. Um, and then they're stored by, they just like are saved in a so-called seed job, which made more sense when I named it originally um, for to be able to display the grid and such. As it turns out, there's something kind of like this for Kubernetes out there. I've couldn't find the link when I searched again five minutes before this talk. Um, but it's predicated on a central decision maker that creates and destroys pods, Kubernetes pods, which is super cool, um, but a very different approach to the same problem. Um, this is a total tangent, but I tried fronting the UI with Waypoint. Um, and I managed to get that to work with a complicated job spec by customizing the Nomad waypoint plugin. But the waypoint.run URL just like, I don't know if there was a geography between where that's hosted and my service or whatever it was, it wasn't responsive enough um, to get like sub second refresh rates. So I should probably follow up on that with the waypoint team and see what they have to say. Um, or learn more front end stuff like web sockets, like you make one connection. I, I don't know how that works. So maybe I have more learning to do. So to do all that, we need some infrastructure. Um, we have a thing for that. Um, and thanks, many thanks to our product delivery team, also in engineering services, for producing really useful modules, Terraform modules. So this one was the Nomad starter module. You can find it, put in a few parameters, tuck it at AWS, and it will make you a Nomad slash console cluster. Super easy to do, really, really nice. Um, there are lots of cool modules out there, as you probably already know. Um, but if, you, if you're thinking like, I want to do this kind of thing, see if there's already a module that does that kind of thing and um, steal or um, use it. So the prototype, this is what we delivered for um, the hackathon. Uh, pretty messy from the scramble. Um, and we were purposefully stretching ourselves, so that introduced more chaos which is a lot of fun. Um, my hackathon teammates, Kingsley and Omar, were super helpful to get this together, which brings our total number of people involved up to four for this absurd scenario. Um, and as mentioned, it won best in show, which is always fun to get accolades and awards. So that was nifty. Hopefully you like it too. Um, okay, so this is how the prototype constructed itself. This is, we're starting to get into technical details. So my laptop makes a Nomad API call to create this seed job 00. zero. And then it knows to make a Nomad API call to create the one one, the upper left. And then it hits Nomad API to create its neighbors 
and so on and so on and so on. Uh, this was super fun. And if I may say pretty clever, works great on my laptop with like 60 cells or so. Um, but at scale, Nomad got bogged down by thousands of almost simultaneous new job API calls and started failing to respond to those calls. Um, it was just like a dinky little server, so probably could have scaled it up a little more. But at the end of the day, Nomad had a big sad. Um, I tried adding checks to only create jobs if they didn't already exist, but it didn't really help much. And to check if they existed, I had to make an API call. <laughs> so the, um, what I learned from this or a take home message is be respectful of the ground you're standing on if you're building an application on Nomad, be nice to Nomad. So this is how the system once built, how it steps through the iterations. Um, at each step, 2.2 two here would hit console API eight times to find out the status of its neighbors, and then do the rules, and then hit console again to say, hey, here's my status. <laughs> um, and that's just for this one thing to figure out what it is. And then also every step, the seed job makes a console API call to find out all of the separate cell statuses. So this one line is a little misleading. It's actually rather a lot of lines, um, but I figured this was messy enough to get the point across. Um, as you might imagine, console didn't like it. It had also a big sad whenever I tried to scale it up. Um, and I'm calling this the console squid. Uh, I don't know what about it. It just makes me chuckle. It's just got too many tendrils. Like it's, it's too tightly built into the system, like every step along the way. Um, console experts probably would have looked at this picture and gone, why? Um, the reason is because we're learning and we're having fun. Um, this, this, the inefficiency of this and of the Nomad job creation occurred to me like, this could be a weird load test. <laughs> um, that hasn't and probably won't turn into anything, but it's, it's kind of a weird load test. It's just so rude to these services. Um, what I did not test is whether splitting console and Nomad onto separate server nodes, because um, in this picture, they're on one server together whether that would have helped, but either way, I want to improve the system. So let's do that. The final product, um, I just pushed the last commit about an hour ago. Um, another teammate, uh, Aaron Bennett of House of Bennett, no relation, or he's my cousin or my uncle or um, my dad, or we make different jokes about that. Nobody cares, uh, <laughs> except for me. <laughs> um, while he is largely not to get blame, he is a big help changing my some of my vision and getting me to think about Go differently. So even though I hadn't fully taken on board all of his suggestions, really Aaron is to blame. So blame him if this is terrible. Uh, I get credit if it's great, of course. Uh, also had some help more recently from even more teammates to Hoot, Diane, and Randy, um, bringing the total number of people involved to Eight. Um, and then add in multiple supportive management layers and so on. None of this would have happened if our managers didn't go like, yeah, have fun for a week. Um, and then also continue having fun and make a hashy talk about it. Um, so I didn't count all of them, but you know, plus, plus, plus for all those folks. Um, takes a village. It's super duper nice to have management support and even encouragement to have this sort of like almost lawless learning, just playful, let's see what happens kind of attitude. Big thanks to, to that. So this is the new picture. Um, we have only a single Nomad job called Game of Life goal. Um, so only one Nomad API call. It makes a seed group with just our one little seed uh, process running and this grid group to spin up all the other grids. Um, and we just kind of let Nomad handle all that and it spreads them out across the nodes and so on. Um, here's some code for you. 
So this is highly truncated, of course, but set a couple local variables so I can change these values really easily. And then, you know, rerun to iterate in the development loop. Make the seed group, make the grid group, and set the count to, you know, whatever this real big number is. It's over 2,000 jobs. Um, so Nomad was way, way, way happier with this. It's not instantaneous, but it's quite quick. And Nomad doesn't get just slammed and like stop responding. Um, what's not pictured here is, you know, this, whatever this value is, you know, width and height are provided as envir environment to the running processes so that they can like make an internal model of the grid and their neighbors and stuff. Um, and this approach also let me delete my bespoke Nomad API code. Um, love deleting code. So take our message here is like, let the tools work for you and don't try to do weird, too weird of things unless you just want to have fun. So this is how the system progresses. Um, the seed has a little ticker that it runs that just has a sleep, you know, just has a little clock. So this is our clock now. We have a global clock um, by way of it sending to all the jobs TikTok over UDP. And whenever the cell receives that TikTok, it waits a second to make sure all the other neighbors have also received that TikTok. Um, checks its memory from the last time to see what the neighbor's statuses were. Um, and then do the rules. Once the rules are done, um, reach out, you know, communicate over UDP again to all of the neighbors um, what its status is so that they know so that they can apply their, their rules and so on. Um, it finds the neighbor's addresses via console, but we're using DNS this time. We're only using console for service discovery. We're not doing health checking there anymore, so that makes it responsible for fewer things. And DNS is over UDP, nice and really quick. It's faster than HTTP, so if you're doing um, service discovery in your application code instead of, say, letting Nomad handle that for you, then I highly recommend using the DNS over UDP. It's much faster. And then it also caches that, so it hangs on to whatever that result was um, so that console only gets needs to get hit when something changes. So it's a much more efficient system. Um, let's see. I think we're ready for, oh, here's some code. So um, this is some sort of truncated Go code, almost pseudo code. The run says like find a seed, run my UDP listener, run the ticker. This is the first time that I've ever used Go routines for an actual reason and not just some uh, example that I was following online that just sleeps or something. Um, Super duper nice. Really love the way that Go makes concurrency easy. So that's really rad. Um, if I'm not a seed, then just run my UDP listener and that will be responsible for doing the math and stuff whenever it receives the TikTok and so on. Uh, the ticker, you know, every once in a while, let's say half a second or something, we'll see, is there a pattern queued up? Like, do we want to plant a pattern? If so, tell all of the cells, like, hey, we should do a pattern together, you guys. Uh, otherwise, send that TikTok. So now is time for the demo. Um, I, I wanted to mention, here's my little pull request with many, many changes um, at the very last moment. Um, and uh, yeah, so we've got these. Oh, remind me later. Um, we've got this is Nomad UI, which you've probably seen during hash talks. You've been if you've been watching. We have seven nodes, zero allocations on any of them. Um, we've got console cruising along with sort of the default services that console and Nomad register. And let's just kick the tires and see what happens. Uh, hopefully the text is visible. It's not that important really though. So we ran our one game of life guy. We can see our allocations starting to come in. Um, I had to do a decent bit of uh, magic number tweaking to find the optimal 
number to land on here. But we end up with about 300 cells per, um, per nomad client node. Another way to look at this is our topology view, which is pretty rad. Uh, you can see it's they're pretty well packed in there. <laughs> um, and according to this, I'm really right at appropriate capacity, which is which is nice. This is my little seed job. It's going ham. I didn't allocate quite enough resources for it. We're about to see the picture, y'all. We're almost there. Uh, we have a boatload, if I refresh, of console services. Just lots and lots and lots and lots of them. It goes on for days. And we should now have this thing doing a game of life. This is just a little JavaScript Ajax call to hit the C job over HTTP to get this. And if you're familiar with game of life, you'll see some you know, stable patterns just kind of hanging out after the, the sort of chaos of initial launch. Um, but I wanted to be able to do specific patterns. So this is one of my favorites, and it was from an earlier slide. Is our little glider gun, you guys. It's uh, glider gunning. We'll see a glider spit off here in a second. It's a little slow, right? Like It looks like it's not trying that hard. Um, but I assure you, it's doing many, 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 many things. This is just the logs from the seed process. You can see the TikToks pop up there and sending, receiving messages um, from all the cells. And if I just kind of stop that going, that, that's 101,000 <laughs> log entries during that, what was that, five seconds or something? Um, so yeah, that's pretty much the demo. There are other patterns we can plant. This one's my favorite. It's, it was also really helpful in observing during troubleshooting because this always does the same thing. So I could just like make a little tweak, set this running, wait 20 minutes and see if it dissolves. So finally got all the little numbers correct so that it wouldn't fall apart on me. So that's the demo. Um, let's see, a quick recap of our goals. Um, make a cool thing. Did that, I think it's pretty cool. Um, learn more Golang, definitely did that. Abuse Nomad and Console, check. You got a better idea of how to be nicer and, and use it more gracefully for applications in the future that you know maybe do business goals for the managers out there listening. And of course, collaborate with some awesome folks. So that's all I've got as far as my presentation goes. Um, Happy to answer any questions you may have. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, chat's been quiet with questions today. And I'm like, I see you. I see that you're in there, but you're not asking questions. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, admittedly, if it were me and I was watching this talk, I would be like, I don't know. Like, what questions would I even have? <laughs> yeah. I mean, we got a comment that says, um, I love to learn by playing too, but this is a level up from what I could ever come up with. And I was like, I relate to this. This is really cool. And uh, I would not build this in a week. <laughs> oh boy. Well, I didn't build this in a week. We built the prototype <laughs> in a week and it technically worked, sort of. <laughs> That's fair. I guess um, for my, like, I'll ask a question then because it's quiet, but uh, sure. you talked about like wanting to break the stuff. Did you find any points where, oh, are we freezing it? No, we're back. OK, computer, please stop. But uh, right. <laughs> um, which points did you find were like the most fragile with your, uh, I guess, building of Nomad and Console? Yeah, so the, there were two main things. Um, I, I encountered, I guess, like three main breakpoints where it, where it just like wouldn't. Um, in the prototype mode, with all the way too many HTTP calls to get um, health check status and so on. Um, that uh, console, gosh, I'm trying to remember if there were specific errors logged because that was a while ago now. Um, it would eventually, if I remember right, it would just slow way down and console CPU usage, you know, you hop in and run top or something um, in a shell and the Nomad CPU usage was pretty well pegged. Um, so that just slowed everything down. It, it 
still worked, but it was extremely slow. Uh, another thing, and this actually still happens even in the final product, at initial launch, the cell job is trying to get the addresses of all the cells, like kind of all at the same time. So I added retries um, for it. But um, if you do, I don't know, 2,000 DNS lookups on the little console guy running on one server in the span of five seconds, then console will spit back at you, server misbehaving. And I just thought that was cute. Um, it's my favorite error message I've heard a lot. <laughs> no, it's just like, how is it misbehaving? I don't know. But um, like Nomad CPU wasn't totally pegged, I don't think. But it would, it would at least respond and go like, I, I can't help you server misbehaving. Um, and then the Nomad one was the API calls. Um, Nomad would, would come back with just EOF. Like, it just gave me nothing. Um, I, I, I think it just couldn't do anything. It wasn't a, like a, a no response. It just like, it returned EOF. Like it just didn't know what to do. I'm not sure what the internals of these things happening look like, um, but yeah. So we did have two questions come in um, and then I think we'll wrap, but question number one was, what was your favorite, all-time favorite game of life pattern? Um, my all-time favorite. So this one isn't a specific pattern exactly, but as a teaser, if you're thinking of looking it up, um, you can find videos where it starts really zoomed in on these little cells, like kind of cruising along in like a line, and then slowly zoom out, zoom out, zoom out, and it turns into a grid, a, like a way bigger grid of the game of life playing. Um, I just love the like recursion there almost, or the you know fractal nature of it. Super cool. Um, other than that, I I love the glider. It's a little 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 thing that scoots. And the last question we had uh, was, could you share one of your most interesting debugging instances? Debugging instances. Okay, so the the ghost bug that I had, I had this problem. Well, I had, I had two problems. One was the race condition where the, uh, this is a two-part answer, I have, I have time. <laughs> One was the seed job would send TikTok to everybody and they would immediately start applying the rules and updating their neighbors. So there's this like odd, like the, it, things weren't in step and they, they were following the rules as far as they were concerned, each cell, but like they would receive an update, like the, the updates of all the neighbors were concurrent with the rules being applied. So I needed a little magic sleep in there just to give it a moment for all the cells to receive the TikTok before um, applying rules and updating one another. And then the other one was, um, I was calling it a smearing bug because I didn't know what was happening, but the, the rules were being followed. Like you could see a glider or a lightweight spaceship or something like moving across the screen, but it wasn't quite right, but it was stable. So like the rules were being followed so I had a problem in the seed job somewhere, either in um, it being able to receive the updates in a timely manner or um, in the, the logic of translating what it has in memory to the UI. So I added like locks everywhere on all of my updating of memory stuff and just like mutex is all over the place. Um, but that one ended up being that all I had another sort of race condition. All of the cells were trying to update the seed like at the same time or close. And the seed can only process so much. So they were timing out because there's a, you know, you don't want to try to UDP forever. And there's like a 500 millisecond timeout. So they were timing out. So the cell, the seed would only get some of the updates and some of it would be stale from last time. But the entire rest of the system, all the individual cells know, you know what they're supposed to know. So the pattern was persistent, but it was just kind of smeared across the screen like a ghost bug. So the solution there was to add some jitter to those updates, like a hundred millisecond, you know, random between zero and a hundred millisecond jitter or something. So they didn't all stampede simultaneously. Well, that's really cool to know. And thank you so much for joining us today. We are at time right now, but.